Well, hello and welcome back to another one of my videos. Today I'm here and I'm standing right next to the majestic Indian Pacific. I'm really excited today because I'm going to be taking this train in gold class all the way over to Sydney. I'm really excited. It's my first time on the Indian Pacific. I want to see just what a luxury train is like. This, I've heard so many things about this train. I'm so excited to get on board. So, this train's already coming from Perth. We're taking it on the last little leg to Sydney. Let's have a night on this train and let's see how it goes. Let's do this. Welcome back to my channel. My journey today begins at the Adelaide Parklands Terminal, the home of Journey Beyond Rail and their trains. The trains that operate out of this station are the Garn, the Indian Pacific, the Great Southern and the Overland. The station is located in Keswick, just west of the Adelaide CBD. The Indian Pacific has two levels of service, gold and platinum. The Indian Pacific originated in Perth 48 hours ago and I will now join it for 24 hours on its final leg through to Sydney. After a lady had checked my ID, she was able to hand me our boarding passes and ask if we wanted to check any bags in. I had to deny though. The staff at the station had set up a refreshment station for the passengers while they waited for the train to commence boarding. On offer was a selection of coffee and tea. Although it was only 8.30 in the morning, there was still champagne on offer. And finally, some juices. I found myself a seat and decided to settle down with a glass of orange juice. The staff also then brought out a selection of pastries as well as some desserts. At this point I hadn't eaten breakfast yet so I decided to try out both a pastry and a dessert. There was also some live music playing at the station. And finally, there is a gift shop located in the corner of the station. The gift shop includes items such as mugs, socks, backpacks, and today's paper. In the other corner of the shop, you can also buy Indian Pacific t-shirts and hoodies, as well as the Garn t-shirts and hoodies. The Indian Pacific name comes from the two oceans, the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. This name comes from the fact that the train connects Perth, which is situated on the Indian Ocean, and Sydney, which is located on the Pacific Ocean. Boarding commenced at around 9.45, 30 minutes prior to departure. Today I'm seated in carriage A, right at the back of the train. Hello, Hello. Good morning. Um, nine what and is ten. Their room number? Nine and ten. Nine and ten, easy. Thank, thank you. you so much. Just heading to the right. Thank you. And I'll be there soon. Thank you. Welcome aboard the Indian Pacific. This is my carriage, a gold single carriage. There are 16 gold cabins in this carriage. And welcome to my cabin. Today I'll be seated and sleeping in cabin 10. Before I go and explore my room, let's go and have a look at some of the other service levels on this train. Welcome to the Gold Twin Cabin. This is the most popular choice of service on the Indian Pacific, and it is the cheapest way to travel for couples on this train. The benefit of this room is that it features its own private bathroom. In terms of the bedding, the couch converts into one bed, and the bunk bed can be folded down. Welcome to Platinum Class. This is the most expensive way to travel on the Indian Pacific, and just like Gold Twin, it features its own private bathroom. Instead of bunk beds, this one has two single beds. Platinum cabins are also available to come in one double bed. Now back to my cabin. Due to limited budget today, I'm only seated in a gold single cabin. 
the cheapest way to travel on the Indian Pacific. Nevertheless, this will sure still be an amazing experience. Let's have a look at the features of this gold single cabin. Located next to the door, there is a power point, as well as a hand towel. There is a mirror located next to that, as well as a sink, and another hand towel. Below is a cupboard, which stores my towels for showering. There is an empty cupboard next to it, and a cupboard with a bin below it. Moving on, above me, there is a rack, which is where some of my bedding is being kept during the day. There is also a large window located next to my seat. And below that, there is a table which has some items on it. That I'll go through later. And then there is my seat. That converts into a bed when I wish to go to sleep by using this handle. It also comes with a comfortable pillow. Next to my door, there is a control panel for audio. It has a range of channels that can be played as well as live commentary. There are also two light switches to control the lights in my cabin. Next to my seat there is a large compartment, most likely for a suit or a coat, as well as a staff call button. There are also two additional storage compartments. Finally, I'll speak about how this one works a little later on. The blind on the window next to my seat can be adjusted up and down just like this. The table next to my seat had a range of items on it when I arrived. This includes an Indian Pacific brand of bottle of water and Indian Pacific lanyard. There is also a card. The card features my dining times and what time I need to be at the restaurant car. I'll have a 12pm today dinner at 6pm as well as breakfast anytime tomorrow morning between 6 and 8am. There is also a brochure that features information into the possible train excursions and gives a rundown of each of them and what they feature. The off-train excursion in the Blue Mountains tomorrow morning, there is either a walk or a journey through the Blue Mountains. That is a bit less physically demanding. There is also a Journey Beyond magazine named Beyond, as well as a small booklet containing information about the history of the Indian Pacific and what the train is today. Very slowly, the train started drifting away from the Adelaide Parklands Terminal in order to begin our 28 hour journey to Sydney. During this time, the lady who was in charge of our section of the train came around to introduce herself and share some information about the train as well as find out what off train excursions we wanted to do. The lady who just came around and introduced herself also took note of which excursion I wanted to do. I opted for the journey through the Blue Mountains as I've seen it on another video a few days prior to leaving and I wanted to experience it for myself. I decided to go for a little walk and explore the train in a little further detail. There are four carriages dividing my carriage and the lounge car. Welcome to the Outback Explorer Lounge. This is the lounge where most of the time is spent on the train. It is a good place to socialise and make some new friends as well as watch the countryside roll by. 
On offer in this lounge car is a wide range of Indian Pacific merchandise available for sale. And trust me, this merchandise doesn't come at a cheap price. There is also a wide range of drinks and food upon request. There are alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages available inclusive of your ticket. Available was a wide selection of wines as well as beers. Finally, there was also soft drinks and dry mixes. There was also barista and self-made coffee available. I decided to go to the bar and order myself a chai latte. I sat back and enjoyed my chai as I watched the landscape roll past. Whilst we were on our way out of Adelaide, we passed the Garn, another one of Journey Beyond's trains. If you'd like to see me review this train, please comment down below. The atmosphere in the Outback Explorer Lounge was nice. So many new faces meeting new people and talking. I was feeling a bit hungry, so I decided to keep myself going to lunch by ordering a bowl of chips. In the corner of the carriage, there was also a large moving map. And after I'd seen that, I decided to head back to my carriage. Looking deeper into my carriage, there are two showers located at the end of my carriage. These showers are to be shared by 16 people. I found the showers to be reasonable, although I'll speak more about this after I've showered tomorrow morning. At the front of my carriage there is a hidden section. This features a selection of tea and coffee that you can make yourself. It also features a tap. As well as a hot and cold water dispenser. There are also two toilets without showers located adjacent to this. Returning to my cabin, I found some additional storage underneath the seat. This is a convenient place for me to put my backpack. My lunchtime is 12pm and it's now 11.50. Hence, it's now time to head to the Queen Adelaide restaurant for my first meal aboard the Indian Pacific. Myself and the other passengers in my carriage had to wait in the Outback Explorer Lounge before we got called through to the restaurant for lunch. There were tables of four, and myself and mum sat on one, with two ladies who we hadn't spoken to yet. Today's lunch is a two-course lunch, which features local ingredients. All of the meals on the Indian Pacific feature ingredients from the area in which the train is travelling through and when the meal is served. The lunch began with a glass of water. Following that was a bread roll. The bread roll had a lemon myrtle taste to it, which I actually really enjoyed. The lady then came back and took my drink order. I decided to go with a glass of Sprite. The mains then started appearing. This is mum's, she got the spinach cascadilla. It sure looked a lot tastier than mine. My main then appeared. I decided to go with the Great Pickers lunch. The Great Pickers lunch includes a selection of items that can be found locally. I mixed some of them up. That allowed it to taste great. I thought that some of the meats and cheeses were great to try. The bread was also extremely nice. I really liked it. And whilst the portion of the dish isn't the best, I still enjoyed the whole thing a lot. This lunch was good because it allowed me to try a combination of things from the menu. Overall, I really enjoyed my first meal on the Indian Pacific. 
dessert then appeared, mum went with the ice cream, which included three scoops of vanilla and coconut ice cream. For my dessert, I decided to go with the caramelised hazelnut chocolate tart. The tart is served in a single slice with some cream on the side, as well as a little chocolate thing. I don't actually like nuts, hence I had to work my way around them. When eating the tart, but I still really enjoyed this tart. It tasted amazing. The nuts were easy to work around. So even if you don't like the nuts, I would still highly recommend you try this tart. Mum let me finish off her ice cream. The ice cream is definitely a simpler dessert. It tasted great, but if you don't like coconut, then I would stay away from this dessert. Overall, two great desserts for my first meal on the Indian Pacific. We are now approaching Crystal Brook. Crystal Brook is an essential place for Australian railways, as it is home to the Crystal Brook Triangle. The triangle is where the track that goes west to Darwin and Perth meets the track that goes south to Adelaide, and also meets the track that goes east to Sydney. And that is the track that we're travelling on today. After finishing my lunch, I was directed back to the Outback Explorers Lounge. I took a seat in the lounge and watched the scenery roll by behind us. The train also had arranged a guitar player to go between the carriages during the afternoon. I got myself a glass of non-alcoholic champagne and sat back and enjoyed his music. The scenery was changing very quickly as we were reaching Outback Australia. Following the singing was a performance by a drag queen. The train stopped for about an hour to let another train go by. In that time, I decided to get myself some corn chips to keep myself going until dinner. After a fun afternoon in the Outback Explorers Lounge, I decided to grab myself an orange juice and head back to my cabin. After about an hour of being stopped, the train finally started moving again. Therefore, I decided to kick back and put my feet up and take in the scenery. And with that, also fall asleep. The gentle rocking of the train helped with this. When I woke up, it was time to go to dinner. So I put the Make Up My Room sign on my door and made my way to dinner. This sign is essential as it lets the staff know that I want them to make up my room while I'm at dinner. Just like lunch, before dinner I had to wait in the Outback Explorers Lounge before being called through to the restaurant. I was feeling a little bit thirsty so I ordered myself a lemon Sprite from the bar. We've just crossed the border into New South Wales and with that our clocks now go forward 30 minutes. We were soon called through to dinner. Yeah, this one this time. I'll go Tonight's meal, the only dinner on board the Indian Pacific. For me, this comes as a three course dinner. Just like lunch, dinner started with a glass of water for everyone on the table. Outside, I noticed that we were very quickly approaching Broken Hill. The meal started with a canapé. I'm not sure exactly what this is, and it wasn't on the menu, although what I do know is that it tasted really nice. Next up was a bread roll. The bread roll was provided as a standard bread roll, but it tasted just fine. It was also provided with butter. The staff came around to take a drink order. This time I decided to go with a glass of non-alcoholic Shiraz. I thought that it tasted okay, but it was nothing special for me. We are soon approaching Broken Hill, a major mining town for Australia. The meal soon started appearing. For entree tonight, I've decided to go with the grilled saltbush crusted kangaroo loin. 
It came with the noodle salad. Let's start with the noodle salad. The salad tasted nice. It wasn't overpowering, which meant that the flavours of the kangaroo still dominated the dish. The dressing wasn't obvious nor overpowering, which allowed the salad to be perfect and a great match for the kangaroo loin. Now for the kangaroo loin. This is my first time trying kangaroo and it has a truly unique taste that I couldn't describe to you. The chefs on the train cooked the kangaroo loin perfectly. The outside of the meat was crispy and the inside of the meat was cooked medium but still managed to be extremely tender at the same time. If you manage to get on this train, I would highly suggest trying out the kangaroo loin. It is one of my favourite dishes I've had on any journey beyond train. Overall, I really enjoyed the entree tonight. A great way to kick off the meal. In comparison, my mum ordered the roast chicken. It looks boring and she could confirm that it tasted very dry. Our train started slowing down into Broken Hill and eventually stopped in order for a crew change. For the main course, my mum chose the grilled swordfish. She liked it. For my main course, I went with the B5 fillet and mash. The dish came with the meat, some carrots, mashed potato, and also came with a sauce. So, what are my thoughts on the dish? Well, I really enjoyed it. There was an extremely reasonable portion of meat with the dish, so no complaints there. The meat was cooked medium rare. This was impressive to do with such a thick slice of meat. I liked the taste of it, it tasted amazing, and I thought that the vegetables that came with it complemented the meat so well, as well as the sauce that was on top of it. All of this combined to make a really good main course, and an extremely filling main course as well. Therefore, I really enjoyed this meal, and would highly recommend anyone taking the Indian Pacific to try this dish. You will not regret it. To go along with our dinner, the table received a shared plate of salad. I used the salad to wash down my meat, and it was refreshing after eating two very meaty courses. Overall, I really enjoyed the main course tonight on the Indian Pacific. Two fantastic courses served so far. I was soon presented with a fork and a spoon before my dessert came out. For my dessert tonight, I went with the banoffee pie. The pie consists of the pie, a scoop of vanilla ice cream, some blueberries, and cookie crumbs. So, what are my thoughts on this pie? Well, I thought that the pie tasted amazing. I honestly couldn't fault it. The dish was quite creamy, but that helped me feel refreshed after the two meaty dishes. I really enjoyed the pie, and if you're traveling on the Indian Pacific, I would highly recommend you try out this dessert. After comparing it to all the other desserts I saw, this is sure the one that you want to be picking and get your hands on, so no regrets in picking this option. The ice cream and the cookie crumbs cooled down the dish and also complemented the taste of the pie very well. And it was really nice to have some blueberries in there to get some fruit down me. After a great dinner on the train, we were directed back to the Outback Explorers Lounge, so more passengers could go into the restaurant and eat their dinner. I settled down in the Outback Explorers Lounge and spoke to a few of the other passengers. Meanwhile, I got myself a chai latte from the bar. Here is a list of the drinks that are available on the Indian Pacific. They are all included in your ticket price. Feel free to pause and have a deeper look at this menu. I got myself a bottle of sparkling water and a bowl of corn chips and relaxed in the lounge using my 500 free megabytes of Wi-Fi that is available in the lounge per day. After relaxing in the lounge car for a few hours, I decided that it would be best if I made my way back to my room.
Upon returning to my room, I could see that the staff had made my bed up. Laying on the bed was a feedback card for the Indian Pacific. This can be done online or with pen and paper. There was also a very tasty chocolate. And some Indian Pacific branded slippers. So let's talk about the bed. I'm 5 foot 11 and I found the length to be absolutely no issues at all. My feet couldn't touch the wall in front. There are three pillows on the bed. One is for decoration and two are for sleeping. When I slept, I slept with both. I found that the pillows were a little soft, but once combined the pillows together, there was no issues at all. It's now time for me to go to get some sleep, so good night from me. So how did I sleep? Of course, sleeping on a moving train comes with its challenges. I managed to get sleep through the night, just fine, on and off though. The staff did mention this part of the track between Sydney and Adelaide is the roughest of the entire journey. I set my alarm for 5.30 so that I would be able to use the shower before anybody else. In the cupboard below the sink, I was able to grab my towel and after grabbing my clothes and a amenity kit, I'm ready to head to the shower now. Both showers were empty when I arrived and thankfully both clean. The shower room is actually quite nice. Large I found as well, heaps of space in here. There is an assistance handle right next to the shower for anyone who might need some assistance. I found the water pressure of the shower to be really good, as well as the warmth of the water, hence I was able to get a really nice shower in this morning. It was then time to make my way back to my cabin. As you can see, sadly, it's a little dark outside, so I'll wait a little while for the sun to rise. The sun very slowly began to rise, offering some amazing views over the Blue Mountains this morning. I shortly packed up my bag and headed for breakfast, which is done when you want, any time between 6 and 8am. I started my morning with a hot chocolate in the Outback Explorers Lounge. It tasted just fine, but certainly did the job in waking me up. As you can see, we're very quickly approaching the Blue Mountains, where the Indian Pacific will stop for an off-train excursion. After finishing my hot chocolate, I was asked if I wanted to head into the restaurant for breakfast, and I did. Today's breakfast includes a starter of cereal, followed up by a main course. But first, the choice to make today was what juice to have. I opted for an orange juice. This comes with a glass of water as with every other meal on the Indian Pacific. First up to, for today's breakfast was the cereal. I chose cornflakes. The staff give you milk separate, meaning that you're able to add as much or as little as you like. I thought this was a really smart initiative by them. In terms of the cornflakes, they tasted just like regular cornflakes, so absolutely no complaints there. However, I think it's a really good thing that they do this before the main breakfast, and it fills you up that tiny gap in your stomach that you may sometimes feel after eating breakfast. The mains then came out. My mum went with the full breakfast. She said that it tasted great and would recommend it. For my breakfast, I went with the scrambled eggs and smoked trout. 
The fish comes with the eggs and the trout and also a slice of rice sourdough toast as well as some spinach and tomato. There is a decent serving of scrambled eggs on the trout. I thought that the eggs were fantastic. They were cooked to absolute perfection. These are some really good scrambled eggs and I can't believe the chefs have done this on board a train. They really have must have done this quite a few times to master it. The trout also tasted really nice. I enjoyed getting some protein into me this early in the morning. However, it did have a very strong fish taste. So if you don't want the fish taste to be the first thing that you taste in the morning, then I would not recommend getting this dish. Overall, I enjoyed this breakfast. There was also a shared basket of sourdough toast to be shared with your table. The toast came whilst we were eating our mains. Overall, I really enjoyed my breakfast this morning on the Indian Pacific. It's now time to head back to my cabin, just as we are approaching the Blue Mountains. Here is one last look at my cabin before we say goodbye. It's now time to leave my cabin and head to the Outback Explorers Lounge. We have our off-train excursion in the Blue Mountains, and in this time we'll be leaving the train as it goes to Sydney to turn around and we'll be shuttled to Sydney in a hideout metro train. We soon arrived in Mount Victoria, which is where we'll say goodbye to the Indian Pacific. Um, just watch the step forward. Thank you so much. Enjoy the tour, eh? Thank you. <laughs> See you later. Okay, we're here in Mount Victoria. We just said goodbye to the Indian Pacific and now it's on for a tour through the Blue Mountains. So uh, let's see how this goes. Great journey on the Indian Pacific, but it doesn't stop yet. We soon boarded a coach which would take us around the Blue Mountains today. Thing that you don't want to take with you will be safe from the bus, it'll be locked up if I'm not with it. The driver gave live commentary along the journey. That included the history and the information of the areas that we were going through. The weather wasn't the best today, so we were handed an Indian Pacific branded bottle of water as well as an Indian Pacific branded poncho. I'll certainly be taking the poncho home with me. Anyway, our first stop today is Scenic World. Our time there started with an introduction by one of the workers, and then we were further directed into the scenic cable car. The first ride that we'll be going on today in Scenic World is the Scenic Cable Way. Please mind the gap. Please mind the gap. Let's hop aboard the Scenic Cable Way. The Indian Pacific group was split into four groups, completely randomly, so no platinum and gold do the same off train excursions. Welcome aboard, just mind the gap. All three of them are over 900 metres tall. If you're at the front of the cabin, if you look out across the valley, there's a large flat top plateau. That's called Mount Solitary. I had a day's walk to get out there. People even climb to the top of the camp overnight, so they're nice and early for sunrise next morning. Now behind us, we are departing away from Orphan Rock. It's that lonely sandstone pillar there. As we get down a bit lower, Katoomba Falls will come into view, so let's make sure you can see you will be following Steph uh, through the rainforest. For those who aren't part of Indian Pacific, there are three boardwalks down here. There's a 10 minute, a 30 minute, and a 50 minute. 10 minute boardwalk, very flat, easy, 400 meters, fastest way to run. That sky, I'm not sure what it's called, cable car was sick. That incline, but we get to take the world's steepest railway. 
back up, so it's going to be the same thing, but the train, that's going to be crazy. Thanks for that awesome ride today, Cable Car. In the next part of the excursion, we had a walk around the base of the Blue Mountains, and we were given some background into all of it. Alrighty guys, this is like a lot of Australian animals. Um, the eucalyptus leaves that they can eat is actually very specific. You see the seed for that. Yes. <laughs> and now the, it was an operational on there in this period of time, but in that time, it obviously had a the Next up is this train, the world's steepest railway. I'm very keen to try this out. Let's hop aboard the world's steepest railway. It was a fight for the seat at the front. I fell just short. Extremely quick but enjoyable experience on the world's steepest railway. It's been a fun few hours at Scenic World. Now time for the next stop on the Blue Mountains expedition. Let's now reboard the coaches and head to our next stop. Welcome to the lookout at Katoomba. This is considered to be one of the best viewing points of the Blue Mountains. We soon disembark the coaches. Today we have a private lunch booked upstairs, just for the Indian Pacific group. As we entered, there was a selection of alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages on offer. Myself and my mother found a private table just for us, and I thought that it was this was the menu, but instead it was just a list of all the food that comes on one plate. This is the plate that was served. I thought that it was presented all very nicely and neatly and looks very appetizing. The first thing that it comes with is a tart. I thought the tart tasted really nice. It also comes with a really tasty cannoli. And this was one of my favorite things, a nice fruit pavlova. It also comes with a massive corn chip sort of thing with some sort of dip. And also a quesadilla. I'm not really sure how to say its name too well. Overall, I think this is a great lunch and a great venue that the Indian Pacific has put on for us today. An amazing light lunch for today. We now have around 30 minutes until the coach arrives, so let's walk around. The viewpoint that I'm walking to now is considered to be one of the most picturesque viewing places over the Blue Mountains. Let's now get back on board the coach one last time. Thank you. All good. We had a bit of time to cool before our train departed, so the coach driver took us around for a little scenic drive around Katoomba. I don't want as well. 
it's out. When now at Katoomba Station, instead of the, taking the Indian Pacific through to Sydney, the train left us behind in the mountains and instead will take a chartered metro train which will run express through to Central with all the Indian Pacific passengers on board. Let's now sit back and enjoy the ride into Sydney for the last little leg on the Indian Pacific. As we near Sydney, the Indian Pacific passed us. This train is now doing the reverse journey from Sydney to Perth and departed just 10 minutes ago. Welcome to Sydney. Thank you so much for watching my Indian Pacific video up until this point. I put a lot of effort into this video, so if you want to support me financially, it can be done so through Patreon or PayPal me. Otherwise, a simple subscription on YouTube would help me so much and also motivate me so much. I'll have links to both of those in the description box down below. Also, if this video gets over 100,000 views, I will do the journey on the Garn from Adelaide to Darwin. So make sure to send this video to your friends and wait for that video. Thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day or night wherever you are in the world. That was my journey on the Indian Pacific. That train is amazing. Best train trip I've ever taken. Um, yeah, I'm blown away. If you can afford it, do it. You won't regret it, I promise. Thank you very much for watching the video until this point. I'm so grateful that you're still following along. If you don't want to miss out on more videos just like this one, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you all next Friday for another video. See you all then.